Sir Lolly's Ghost by Asha Nehemaya. The plan, when it was worked out in detail, was something anyone could be proud about. Rohan had decided to use his own pillow and managed to get hold of a long-handled broom, the kind used to clean cobwebs. Since the school had been built in the late 19th century, the extra high ceilings required brooms with impossibly long handles to clean them. In order to make the broom invisible in the dark, he smeared the bamboo handle with damp mud. When no one was around, he practiced how the pillow, supposed to belong to the ghost, would appear to float in the dormitory by being attached to the broomstick. He was delighted when he saw how terrifying the effect was. The final touch was to instruct the other boys in the dorm how to behave on the night when the ghostly pillow made its dramatic entry into the dormitory. On the night of the ghostly visit, it took the excited boys a long time to fall asleep. But Rohan himself was so tired by that morning's grueling practice session for their school's annual cross-country marathon that he slept right through the faint digital beeping of his alarm clock. When he finally woke with a start, he realized that he had overslept. He shone the torch at his alarm clock. It was already three in the morning. But it was still dark and daybreak in the Nilgiris was several hours away. He felt under his bed. Yes, the pillow he had prepared was right there. Not too late for the ghost to make its appearance, he decided, and was about to tiptoe out of bed when a familiar grating sound warned him that the dormitory door was being opened. It was unlike their housemaster to pay such a late visit to the dorm. Who did the soft footsteps belong to then? When he discovered the reason for the footsteps, icy prickles of fear crept down his spine. For, advancing slowly into the dormitory, was a blood-stained pillow. Holding it was a hideous pair of ghostly white hands, made more terrifying by the fact that they weren't attached to any figure. Rohan's blood turned cold. He fumbled under his bed again, wondering whether any of the boys had decided to start the trick without him. No, the pillow he had prepared was still there, which meant that he was... Was he... No, it wasn't possible. But there it was, a pillow actually floating forward into the room held by a bloodless pair of severed hands. Was it actually a ghost, he wondered, his heart thudding wildly and blood pounding in his ears. Ghost! His throat was so dry with fear that his voice emerged only as a feeble whisper. There's a ghost! He tried again, and this time a few sleepy heads stirred awake. Seeing the bloody pillow, the boys simply assumed that Rohan's plan was working. Some of them even giggled before following the instructions they had been given earlier. They began screaming and shrieking, pretending to be afraid. There was so much confusion that no one noticed that Rohan himself was sitting stiffly in his bed. Instead of being outside the dormitory, steering the pillow with the long broomstick. The screams continued for a long time, even after the pillow had retreated from the dormitory. The boys were having such fun that it was some time before they remembered the target of the trick and turned their attention to Arjun. To their satisfaction, they saw that his eyes had turned saucer-shaped with horror. As for Rohan, the boys were filled with admiration at what they assumed was his superb acting. For even the hair in his eyebrows was standing on end in terror. 
making his bushy brows look like two hairy caterpillars on his forehead. And though he kept rubbing his arms, the goosebumps on them didn't subside till the next day, while the metal braces on his teeth had actually come loose because his teeth had been chattering all night. How were they to know that their prefect wasn't acting and that his fright was totally genuine? Poor Rohan. He was haunted by the memory of the dreadful vision he had seen. How ghastly the blood stains had been, and that spooky pair of hands! He shivered at the thought. Enough to have turned his hair white. He checked the mirror hastily, recalling the story he had made up for Arjun's benefit. His hair was still black, he noted with relief, though the fingers that knotted the special tie prefects wore trembled noticeably. The next few days were among the worst in Rohan's life. He was easily startled, and even the familiar sound of the junior boys stampeding down the wooden corridors or the breakfast gong ringing made him jump up in terror. His heart wasn't in anything. He looked tired and forlorn as he went to fetch a fresh sports t-shirt from the kit room where all the washed uniforms were stored in rows of neatly numbered cubbyholes. This was the matron's domain, and she was busy scolding the school dhobi for not washing the clothes properly. This white shirt looks bluish-gray. There are muddy streaks on these sheets, and this pillowcase has huge red stains on it, the matron was complaining. What can I do, madam? The dhobi defended his washing. That pillowcase had huge patches of red ink on it. You know how difficult it is to wash off red ink. I've managed to get most of the ink off. Red ink on a pillowcase? Rohan froze. Was this the pillowcase that had been bloodied with red ink to become the ghostly pillow? Every student at Lolly's was expected to mark his name on all items of clothing, so it wouldn't be difficult to trace the pillowcase's owner. Matron seemed to have the same idea, for she snatched the pillowcase from the dhobi and examined it. Arjun Krishnaswami? she exclaimed angrily, seeing the new boy's name marked on the pillowcase. This boy is getting worse and worse. Just the other day, there was a complaint that he had taken a pair of white gloves from the band room, the kind that the drummers use, and stuffed it with clay from the sculpture room. The clay had dried in the gloves to make them look like a pair of white hands. What's the matter, Rohan? she asked, suddenly noticing the prefect standing there, absolutely still and pale-faced. You look like you've seen a ghost. The matron and the dhobi crossed themselves at the very mention of the word. Seen a ghost, Rohan repeated numbly, while all sorts of angry thoughts went through his mind about what he'd like to do to that brat, that cheeky rascal, that pest, that pesky newcomer. Then he shook his head and grinned ruefully. Seen a ghost? Oh, no, ma'am. Now, I'm quite certain that I haven't. Seen a ghost, I mean. Now, that is. And he burst out laughing. His laughter was such a loud mixture of relief and hysteria that the matron and the dhobi looked at one another puzzled and then crossed themselves again.